Based on the result of the previous lemma, we can now come to the definition of the law of a stochastic process. So the law or distribution of a stochastic process, xt with t and i, uh, on our probability space omega fp, which we have fixed from the beginning, and uh, with state space e and uh, calligraphic e, is nothing else but the image measure px uh, of our probability measure p under this map x from omega to e to the i and this map uh, we have seen before is simply the map that maps omega to x omega x of omega which is nothing else but the sequence x t of omega for t and i and then you see it's it's rather clear it's just the, the image measure namely uh, Px of um, um, set A, where A is chosen now from this uh, infinite product sigma algebra, uh, is defined as the probability of this uh, set of all omegas in omega such that x omega is in A. What I would like to do now is to discuss the question of how we can encode a flow of information into our probability space. So what do I mean by that? So suppose you have um, a model for a financial market and you would like to encode somehow the information on certain news uh, which you get at regular time points. And you would like to make later on the decision what you should do with your process depending on that additional information you give uh, yourself. And this I would like to have somehow in our um, probability space. So for simplicity, uh, from now on I would like to restrict myself to discrete time processes, meaning that the index set i should be i as a finite set, for instance, the set from 0 to uh, capital T and T is some natural number, or it should be a countable infinite set, for instance, um, the natural numbers including 0. So here's the definition of a filtration. So a filtration, uh, f t with t and i, um, is an increasing family of sub-sigma algebras of f. So this is nothing else but the following. You give yourself uh, two time points, s and t, from i, and s should be smaller than t. And then the sigma algebra fs is con or should be contained in the sigma algebra ft. And these are sub-sigma algebras from the sigma algebra f. And the quadruple consisting of our uh, space omega, the sigma algebra f, this family of sub-sigma algebras, so the filtration, and the probability measure is called a filtered probability space. So and in case that i is countable infinite, um, I define f infinity simply as um, the sigma algebra that is generated uh, by the sequence of all this, these sigma algebras um, and this is for sure um, a sub-sigma algebra of f. So here we allow the possibility that f infinity could even be um, a strict subset of f. Okay, uh, so next I would like to give you um, the notion or introduce to you the notion of a natural filtration. And for that I need a stochastic process. So you give yourself a stochastic process on our probability space omega fp. And then the natural filtration, which I denote by ftx for t and i, with respect to our stochastic process x, is nothing else but 
And so ftx is defined as and the sigma algebra, uh, so the smallest sigma algebra, such, such that um, uh, xs for all s and i and s less than or equal t is measurable. So in other words, this sigma algebra ftx contains all informations of an obser observer of x up to time point t. Um, and so now we have to find a link between the natural filtration and the filtration uh, which is included in, uh, into our filtered probability space. And that's the notion of adaptedness. So consider a filtered probability space. And moreover, consider stochastic process, which I would like to denote again with x. And then this process x is called adapted to the filtration if the following holds, namely if xt is ft measurable for every t and i. And here's a simple remark. Every stochastic process is adapted to its natural filtration because by construction, uh, and it is uh, the process is measurable with respect to that filtration. You see also here is uh, somehow um, how you should think of the uh, filtration and um, uh, this natural filtration. Imagine you have a deterministic process. How should the natural filtration look like? Well, for, an, for a deterministic uh, process, um, it only takes two values. So, uh, so every element in the filtration consists only of two values, namely the full space omega or the empty set. You can check that quite easily. So in that respect, it means that um, you see that this given filtration Ft could be much more complicated. Uh, consist of much more sets compared to the natural filtration. But you see in that respect as well that um, at least uh, this filtration ftx should be contained in uh, ft if the stochastic process um, is adapted. Okay, let's come to an example to illustrate that uh, in more detail. So again, I would like to consider simple symmetric random walk that I introduced before. So this was simply a stochastic process which starts at zero and at each time step it tosses a coin and either it can go up with probability one half or it can go one step down. Uh, so here again is the definition, so it starts at zero. I give myself a sequence of uh, random variables Zn, which are i and d, and with probability um, uh, of the event Z1 equal to plus one is equal to the probability of the event Z1 equal to minus one, and this should be equal to one half. I define the following filtrations f not should be or the following um, uh, sigma algebra so f not should be equal to or should simply consist of the empty set and uh, omega and you see for sure this thing is a sigma algebra and ft is simply the sigma algebra that is generated by the random variables z1 up to zt So and what you observe uh, now is, first of all, the process X is adapted to that filtration Y. Let's consider XT. So XT is a function of uh, these random variables Zn. These random variables Zn are measurable with respect um, uh, to this um, uh, sigma algebra. 
And since uh, Zt is simply a um, measurable, uh, it's a composition of uh, measurable maps, namely the, the, the sum of these measurable maps, it is as well measurable with respect to Ft. Here are, uh, so to say, the, the informations which are encoded in the filtration. Here's an instant for, for an event which is contained in F3. It could be the event that x1 is non-positive and x, the value at time point 3, is of the process larger than 2. Uh, however, this event that the uh, process at time point 4 is uh, strictly positive is not contained um, in the sigma algebra F3. Why? Because I have to look for that into the future, namely at the next time point. What you also see is that um, um, this uh, natural filtration, edge, as I told you, is contained in the sigma algebra since the process is adapted. On the other hand, uh, for every t, this vector uh, z1 to zt is measurable with respect to the natural, uh, so this sigma algebra fxt, uh, which tells you the following. Well, in that example, um, the natural filtration and the given filtration coincide. Okay, so this is how informations are encoded into our probability space and how these informations are linked um, with the process. And here's a particular process which I should introduce by now, namely the so-called previsible process. And a previsible process is the following, it's a stochastic process. Um, which is called previsible with respect to a given filtration ft with t and i, if uh, x0 is constant and xt is ft minus 1 measurable. So you see uh, adaptedness means that xt is ft measurable, but here in that case, um, in order to know the value of xt, it suffices to have informations up to time t minus 1. And that's why this process is called previsible or you can foresee its value given the information up to time t minus 1 at time point t um, or predictive. Uh, let me give you an example which illustrates that where previsible processes uh, naturally occur, namely in the context of gambling or trading strategies. So here's an example. So again, xt uh, should be a simple symmetric random walk which starts at zero. And now you can play the following game. Um, you um, bet on the outcome um, of uh, the random variables z, which were used in order to define the simple random walk, meaning if the process uh, go down, you lose. Whereas uh, if the um, if the process go up, you win, and uh, you win exactly the amount which you uh, uh, wagged in that uh, gambling. And you see the the amount we we put in. This we have to decide for instance, at time zero, and then it's fixed, and then we can observe the outcome at time point one. And for the next round, we put it at time point one, but whether we are successful or not, we can we will only see at time point two. So you see that's a kind of, uh, that's why we have to put these informations. So in order to know this value at time point one, it suffices to have all the informations at the moment before. This is uh, why previsibility uh, occurs here naturally. And here's an interpretation um, um, how you should think of xt. 
So for simple random walk, you can think of xt as the net amount of money uh, at time t uh, you have won uh, if you bet at every time uh, one dollar, right? Why? So you so if you see if you bet every time one dollar, so you put in one dollar, this process go down, you lose. You put in one dollar, you go down, it lose, and so on and so forth. And here you put in one dollar, it goes up. So what is the net amount you win, or in this case you lost? Well, it's exactly one, two, three dollars. Uh, and you see this you can also compute simply by uh, considering this function if h n would simply equal to one, because then you simply get a telescopic sum. It's just the value x t minus x naught. x naught is equal to zero, so it's just the value x t, and this is what you observed here. Now you see you can uh, do better. Namely, you can try to find uh, a strategy h n, which is our previous little process. And here is a famous gambling strategy, which is called a, a margin gap. And it goes as follows. So the value h1 you put in, uh, you said equal to 1, so you have to bet at least 1 euro or 1 dollar. And then the game is the following. Um, ht, you uh, um, bet, so at time point t, and t is now larger than 2, you, you, uh, you put in to the game the amount of money at 2 times ht minus 1. If you lost in the last round, or you put in one if you have one. Meaning the following, so in that example, so uh, at time point one, so you start here, you have to plug in one dollar in order to take part in the game. You lost, so now you decide for H2, you double the money you put in. So you put in two dollars, you lost again because at x3 it goes it went down so uh, and now you repeat well you put in in the next round since you lost you double put in four dollars again you lost again you repeat you put in now eight dollars uh, again you lost um, and at the last step uh, you put in um, uh, $16 and uh, by now you win. So you see this is how um, how uh, the strategy goes. So let's have a look at the payoff. So as I told you, you have here from time point 0 to 1 it goes down, from time point 1 to 2 it goes down and so on and so forth. So that's the payoff at these particular times. Now you see you start with minus one because you lost in the first round, then you double to what you put in. So you, you, your payoff is minus three, again you double, payoff was minus uh, seven, you double again, your payoff was minus 15, since you lost you double again. But yet now here at that point um, the process went up. So m this means now you uh, one exactly what you put in, namely uh, $16. And you see it completely compensates what you have uh, lost up to that time point. And not only it compensates, you also gain, namely $1. So me meaning you have here a strategy which allows you at the end of the day in, ga uh, in game, to, or if you run it long enough to to win to get money out of the system and you see by borel cantelli a payoff equal to one will occur finally with probability one why well you can ask yourself what is the probability that the process go down n step and you see the probability for a simple random walk is simply two to the minus n you see this event and so these probabilities so these values are summable so you, you are in business to apply the borel cantelli lemma and this tells you the limb soup of the events that um 
of the events a n where a n means is simply the event that you lost n times uh, in a row um, and does not occur uh, with probability uh, one so meaning uh, there has to be a time point where you at least win once and by that strategy will compensate all your losses and now you may say well that's a wonderful uh, strategy maybe i should go to my favorite casino and play that strategy i should warn you typically uh, there are two problems first of all uh, it is not allowed to play uh, this martingale strategy in casinos and second uh, it might be that you run out of all your money before the event occur that the process goes up so you see also this uh, this kind of strategy also may occur uh, may have a relevance later on if we discuss financial markets because it's also related to whether you should keep um, or invest into a stock or not or, or increase your investment into a stock or you should sell it and take money out this is also clear in this respect you also have to uh, take your decision um, before uh, you can uh, observe the, the, the value of the stock at the next day okay let me uh, summarize a little bit of that formula which you have seen here and for that I would like to introduce the following notation. So for x and rd, I would like to denote its components by x to the 1 up to x to the d. So these subscripts should uh, um, denote the uh, components. And uh, I would like, so for x and y and rd, I would like to denote by x dot y simply the scalar product in rd, so simply the sum i from 1 to d x i times y i and um, here's the following notion and the notion of a discrete stochastic integral so suppose um, uh, x is a adapted stochastic process and here adapted means with respect to a given filtration f t with t and i and uh, I would like to assume that um, xt takes values in Rd. Moreover, I give myself a previsible uh, Rd value process, which I would like to denote by H. And here also it's previsible with respect to the filtration Ft. And then the discrete stochastic integral of H with respect to x is simply the following stochastic process which i would like to denote by h this big dot uh, x and this is defined in the following way so h big dot x uh, at time t so the stochastic integral of h with respect to x is simply the sum n from 1 to t of h n uh, scalar product with the difference xn minus xn minus 1 and here I have written it completely in components to make that the difference clear between this uh, dot from the scalar product in Rd and this big dot from um, this stochastic integral and here's one simple remark so you see that uh, this stochastic integral is adapted to the filtration ft as well okay let us come now to random times so why should we uh, um, should we be should we be interested in random times well imagine um, uh, you you uh, would like to describe an american call option and remember that the american call option uh, gives you the right but not the obligation to execute it at any time little t before maturity what you should do is well you observe the, the stock market and 
if it reaches a certain height, uh, they would say it. Uh, you should execute. So in some sense, this time point depends on uh, the behavior of the stock market, meaning that this time point itself is random. And that's why we are interested in random times. So as a first object, I would like to introduce uh, the notion of a stopping time. And for that, I need a filtered probability space, which I again denote by omega f, the filtration f t p, and then a map tor from omega to the index set i, union infinity, and uh, recall that the index set i is either finite or at most countable infinite. So this map is called a stopping time if the following holds true, namely the event uh, that tor uh, takes values less, than e less or equal to t is an event which is measurable with respect to ft. And this should hold true for every t in this index set. So in order to decide uh, if the event occurs, um, we only need the information up to that time point t. So we do not have to look into the future. And uh, another thing is the event um, tor equal to infinity can be interpreted as um, the event that the stopping time um, never occurs. So let me give you now a couple of examples. And the first one is uh, an important one, uh, namely that any deterministic time is as well a stopping time. Why, so why is that the case? So consider the following map. A tor of omega is equal to some t naught, and t naught is some fixed value, uh, let's say from our index set i. And then I claim that this mapping is a stopping time. Why? Well, let's consider the events uh, or the event that uh, omega takes a value less than or equal to t. So what can you say about that event? Well, so if t is um, strictly less than t naught, then you see this event is uh, simply empty. Why? Because tor is simply t naught and t naught is, uh, by that assumption, not smaller than t. So we have here on the one hand the empty set. On the other hand, if t is larger or equal to uh, t naught, we see that this thing is then true for all omega. So we get here the complete set capital omega. And you see both uh, sets, the empty set and uh, the full space, omega is contained in the sigma algebra ft for every t and i, meaning that any deterministic time is a stopping time. So here comes the second example. So I consider now a filtered probability space. I give myself an adapted a stochastic process x and suppose that this stochastic uh, process takes values in r and by um, then I choose um, in addition um, a measurable set namely uh, a set b from the Borel sigma algebra over r and then I define the following um, uh, mapping namely I define tor of omega as the infimum of all time points t in our index set such that x t of omega is in b. So meaning the first time point such that our process enters the set b. And here I have the convention that the infimum of the empty set should be equal to infinity. And clearly um, tor is a stopping time. Why? Well, fix the t and i and let's consider the following event, namely that tor takes values less than or equal to t. So what does that mean? So this simply means that we have 
hit the set B before time T. So this means we can now simply, since uh, um, I is a discrete set, we can simply write that thing as um, the first time point um, where the process hits the set B. So we can write that as a union n from 0 to t of the event that xn is in B. And now you see xn is in B. This is simply an element of fn because the process x is adapted. But since n is less than or equal to t, we also know that fn, the sigma algebra fn, is contained in the sigma algebra ft. And this immediately shows that uh, this event that tau is less than or equal to t is contained in the sigma algebra ft. Hence, um, uh, this, uh, um, this hitting time tall of the set B is a stopping time. Here's also an example of a mapping which is not a stopping time. Namely here, let's define this sigma as a map uh, from omega to as uh, the index set union infinity and let's define it in the following way. As sigma is equal to the supremum of all time points such that xt is not in b complement, meaning this is the last time point before the process enters into the set b. But you see, uh, the last time point, now you have the problem, in order to decide whether this is really the last time point, you have to look into the future. And since you have to look into the future, it cannot be a stopping time, because the stopping time is um, has a property that it only depends on the information up to time t, but not of um, later values. Let us come now to a characterization of um, stopping times, uh, which is true due to the fact that our index set is discrete. Here we use it. So we start with our favorite filtered probability space, we consider a map tau from omega to i union infinity. And the claim is the following, that this map tau is a stopping time if and only if the event that tau is equal to t is contained in the sigma algebra ft for all t in the index set i. So you see, compared to the definition of a stopping time, this um, uh, we have here only slightly changed the event, namely, um, before uh, in the definition we had here smaller equal to t and now we have equal to t. So let us prove these two directions. So let us first assume that tau is a stopping time. And let us fix the t and i. So what we would like to show is that this uh, event here, namely that tau assumes the value t is contained in ft. How can we do that? Well, we first of all can rewrite this event f a tau equal to t as the event that tau is less than or equal to t um, minus so the, the difference. This is the, yeah, the con yeah, we take away from that set the event that tau is strictly less than t. But now you see that event here you can also write as the union of all the time points s in our index set i such that s is um, a smaller equal to t of the event um, that tau is uh, less than or equal to s. So you see the union of all these events is equal to that event. And here, what we use here somehow is the fact that um, um, these events are increasing in S. And now we see, well, by assumption, namely that tau is a stopping time, we know that this event is contained in the sigma algebra ft, whereas 
on the other hand, we know that these events are contained in the sigma algebra Fs. And since S is less than or equal to T, we also know that this sigma algebra Fs is contained in the sigma algebra Ft. And since these are sigma algebras, we also know, or sets from sigma algebra, we know, also know that the, the uh, difference of two sets from Ft is a set in Ft. And with that, we have proven the first direction. So let us now come to the other direction. Suppose we know that tau equal to t is contained in the sigma algebra Ft for every t. And let us prove that then this map tau is a stopping time. So let us, for that purpose, let us fix the t and i. And then we would like to write and the event that tau is less than or equal to t is the union of all uh, time points s and i such that s is less than or equal to t of the event that tau is equal to t. Again, by the same reasoning, by, um, by assumption, we know that this event is in the sigma algebra fs, since um, fs belongs to filtration we, and s is less than or equal to t, we know that fs is contained in the sigma algebra ft. And since ft is a sigma algebra, we also know that um, uh, if we take uh, unions of elements from ft, we, con uh, we obtain an element in ft. And that's why we know that this event is contained in ft and this uh, finishes the proof. Well, here comes uh, another lemma which tells you how you can operate with uh, stopping times. So for that purpose, let us consider two stopping times, call it tau1 and tau2. Tor and these should be stopping times with respect to a filtration uh, Ft which is given to us. And then it holds true that the minimum between these two stopping times as well as the maximum between these two stopping times um, are stopping times. So let us prove that. So this is rather uh, easy for any uh, time point t in our index set. Let us observe that the event that the minimum between tau 1 and tau 2 is less than or equal to t is nothing else but um, the union of the event that either uh, tau 1 is less than or equal to t or that tau 2 is less than or equal to t. So now by assumption we know that tau 1 is a stopping time, meaning that this event is contained in ft. On the other hand, we also know that F2, uh, tau 2 is a stopping time, meaning that this event is contained in ft. And we also know that the union of two uh, um, sets from ft is again contained in ft and this um, immediately shows that the minimum of two stopping times is a stopping time. On the other hand, if you consider the maximum of two stopping times, um, as that is um, uh, in the event that the maximum of two stopping times is less than or equal to t, this simply means that both stopping times has to be uh, less than or equal to t. So meaning that we can also write that as the event that tau 1 is less than or equal to t intersecting with the event that tau 2 is less than or equal to t. By assumption, tau 1 and tau 2 are stopping times. So this event is contained in ft. This event is contained in ft. And the intersection of two events from ft is again in ft. Hence, we have proven that also the maximum of two stopping times is a stopping time. What I would like to explain to you now is um, somehow I would like to um, classify the a sigma algebra, which is linked to um, the stopping time. Let me make that a little bit more precise. Well, I again consider my favorite probability space. 
uh, which are equipped with the filtration Ft with T and I. Remember, I is still um, at most countable infinite. I consider an uh, adapted process, which I denote by x, and which should, which should take values in a measurable space E uh, equipped with sigma algebra calligraphic E. And I consider two stopping times, which I would like to denote by sigma and tau. And this should be stopping times as well with respect to the given filtration Ft. And so the first uh, statement is the following. The following class of sets, which I would like to denote by F tau, and which is defined as a uh, set of all um, events A taken from the sigma algebra F, such that um, the intersection of AT with the event that the stopping time tau is less than or equal to T is contained in the sigma algebra Ft, and this should hold true for all t. So this is the way I choose sets from uh, this sigma algebra f. Clearly, this uh, class of sets is contained in the sigma algebra f. And the statement is that uh, this class of sets is a sub-sigma algebra of f. The next statement is that the stopping time tau is measurable with respect to this sigma algebra f tau. Moreover, if I take now two stopping times and I assume that sigma is less than or equal to tau, meaning that sigma of omega is less than or equal to tau of omega for all omega in uh, our probability space capital omega, then it holds true that the sigma algebra f sigma is uh, contained in the sigma algebra f tau. And further, we also have the following. If I take an um, event from the sigma algebra f sigma, then it holds true that the event A intersect with uh, the event that sigma is less than or equal to t is contained in the, in the, in the intersection of the sigma algebras uh, uh, f sigma and f tau. And finally, and that's also important, um, if our stopping time is uh, finite, um, then it holds true that also the stopped process, which is defined in the following way. So x tau of omega is nothing else, but I evaluate my process x uh, omega at time point tau omega is f tau measurable. So meaning stopped processes are still random variables with respect to um, the sigma algebra f tau. Okay, let us have a look at the proof. So let us first check that this sigma algebra f tau, or uh, this class of sets uh, f tau is a sigma algebra. So for that, we have to check three things. First of all, f tau should contain omega. Second, if f tau contains a set A, then also the complement of that set uh, should be uh, contained in the sigma algebra F tau. And if you give us um, a, a collection, um, a countable collection, A1, A2, A3, and so on from F tau, then also the union of this collection should be contained in this um, uh, class of sets F tau. So these three things we have to check. So let's start with uh, uh, if uh, let's start with checking that omega is contained in this class of sets. Well, what do we know? If we intersect omega with um, the event that tau is less than or equal to t, clearly we simply obtain as uh, the event uh, tau is less than or equal to t. 
and by assumption we know that tau is the stopping time hence this event is contained in fp and this holds true for every t in our index set and this simply means that our uh, space omega is an element of this class of sets f tau because that was what I have checked here was the defining property. Let us come now to the uh, second statement. Let's fix uh, uh, an event A, um, or let's give ourselves an event A from, the, from this class of sets F tau. What we would like to show is that also the complement of the set A is contained in F tau. So for that purpose, let us fix a uh, time point t in our index set. And let us consider the intersection of uh, a complement with the event that the stopping time tau um, takes a value which is less than or equal to t. Well, we can rewrite this event in the following way. Namely, I claim that this event is equal to the event that tau is less than or equal to t intersected with the event that a uh, uh, intersected with this event that tau is equal to t uh, complement. Why is that true? Well, let's apply the Morgan's uh, 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 theorems, which means that we can also um, Use, it takes a complement inside, so we get here a complement. Then we have to replace the intersection by the union, and we also get the complement of uh, this event here. Now we can use uh, the, um, the distributional law, meaning that um, we can take the intersection of this event with a complement, which is exactly that expression here. And on the other hand, here, remember, we have here, if we take the complement inside, we have a union. So we take the union of this event with uh, um, intersected with the complement of that event, and we see the intersection of that event with the complement of that event is simply the empty set. So we build, uh, we have here um, taken that event union the empty set written in a more complicated way. <laughs> However, this complicated way is uh, of advantage for us for the following reason. By assumption, we know that this event here is contained in the sigma algebra f tau because tau is the stopping time. On the other hand, we also know that this event here is contained in the sigma algebra f t. Why? because um, we assume that A is in this uh, class of sets F tau. Um, and uh, moreover, we also know that the complement of uh, this event here is contained in the sigma algebra F t because it's a sigma algebra. Hence, we have shown that uh, since the intersection of two events uh, from F t is in F t, we have checked that this event here is contained in Ft, and this holds true for every t and i, meaning that a complement is indeed contained in this class of sets F tau. Likewise, we can do that also for the countable, in, uh, countable union. So for that purpose, choose um, sets A1, A2, and so on from F tau. Let us consider now the countable union of these sets a n so here's the typo here's n missing so now we can rewrite that in the following way that's the union of the intersection of these sets a n with um, uh, the event that tau is less than or equal to t by assumption we know that these events are contained in F T. Since F T is a stigma algebra, we also know that the countable union is contained in F T. Hence we have uh, checked that this event is contained in F T. This holds true for every T. Hence we have uh, proven that the countable union is contained in F T, meaning that indeed this class of sets is a stigma algebra. Let us come now to the second part, namely to check that tor is measurable with respect to f tor. 
So for that purpose, let us uh, fix a value s in our index set and let us consider um, the intersection of the following events, namely that tor is less than or equal to t and that tor is less than or equal to, uh, so sorry, that tor is less than or equal to s intersected with tor less than or equal to t. Why? So in order to check that tor is f tor measurable, we it suffices to check that on a generator. And you see that sets in uh, the generator um, we have in, in mind. And we have to check these, uh, that these sets, which are contained in the generator, are indeed contained in the sigma algebra f tor. Well, why is that true? What does it mean that tor is less than or equal to s and tor is less than or equal to t? This simply means that tor is less, than, less or equal to the minimum of these two values. But since tor is a stopping time, this simply means that this event is contained in the sigma algebra f s minimum t. And since s minimum t is less than or equal to t, we also immediately conclude that this sigma algebra is contained in ft. Hence, we have, since this is true for every t, we have shown that uh, at the event that tor is less than or equal to s is contained in the sigma algebra f tor for every s. And therefore, it follows that um, tor is f tor measurable. The next statement is the following. Uh, so if we have now two stopping times and they have this property that the stopping time sigma is strictly less uh, than or equal to the stopping time tor, then it holds true that the sigma algebra f sigma is contained in the sigma algebra f tor. Well, uh, by assumption that sigma is less than or equal to tor, we first of all know that for every t in our index set i, the event that tor is less than or equal to t is contained in the event that sigma is less than or equal to t. Therefore, we get for any um, event a from the sigma algebra f sigma, uh, the following, so we consider a intersected with this event that tor is less than or equal to t. This I can also write in the following way using that property that um, I consider a intersected with um, uh, the event that sigma is less than or equal to t. And this I can intersect with the event that tor is less than or equal to t. But since tor is a stopping time, we know that this event is contained in f t. On the other hand, we know that this event is contained in f t as well by assumption, namely that a is show, taken from f sigma. And so we have seen that the intersection of two events from f t is again in f t, and this holds true for any t. It immediately follows that this um, uh, event A is contained in the sigma algebra f tor. So let us come now to the next statement, namely that for every um, event from the sigma algebra f sigma, uh, it holds that the intersection of this event A with the um, event that sigma is less than or equal to tor, so this is a tor, uh, is contained in the intersection of these two uh, sigma algebras. So well, what we would like to use here is the following, that the, uh, by lemma 1.3 and uh, what we have proven um, in point C, that it suffices um, to prove that um, as a statement uh, that A intersected with the event that sigma is less than or equal to tor is contained in the sigma algebra 
um, sigma minimum tau. Why? Well, uh, you see this um, this operation, namely this sigma minimum tau is a stopping time, and from that stopping time we know that it's less than or equal to sigma for all omega, and as well we know that this uh, stopping time is less than or equal to tau for all omega, hence we can apply um, the second part here. And then we get immediately that this sigma algebra is contained in the intersection of these two sigma algebras. So let's focus on that statement here. So let us choose uh, event A from the sigma algebra F sigma and let us fix uh, time point T in our index set. Now I would like to consider the following event, namely A uh, intersected with uh, the event that sigma is less than or equal to t, and this I would like to intersect with the um, event that the stopping time sigma minimum tau is less than or equal to t. Why I have to consider that event? Well, I would like to prove exactly that this event here is contained in that sigma algebra, and this was the defining property. Now I can rewrite that slightly. And uh, namely, on that event that we know that sigma is less than or equal to tau, uh, we know here that we can take from this uh, minimum of these um, two stopping times simply the value sigma. So that's why we get here the following st uh, statement. We can rewrite that intersection of this intersection of the event as the event A intersected with the um, event that sigma is less than or equal to t. This comes from that event, taking into account uh, that we know that sigma is less than or equal to tau. And uh, here we intersect with the event sigma is less than or equal to tau, that's a tau. Uh, well, and what we can do now, uh, we can rewrite that event simply by uh, fixing the value of sigma. So we can write, rewrite that event here as the intersection of all s in i that s is less than or equal to t of the event that sigma is less than, uh, is equal to s. And what we know then, so if we intersect that event with that one, we know that tau has to be larger or equal to s. Now let's just have a look at all these events. First of all, we know that this event here is contained in Ft by assumption. Moreover, we know that this event here is contained in the sigma algebra Fs because uh, sigma is a stopping time and uh, uh, we apply the characterization of stopping time that was lemma 1.2, if I remember correctly. And due to the fact that we that uh, Fs is uh, less than or equal to Ft, since Ft is a filtration, um, we get here that this event is an Ft for every S in I with the property that S is less than or equal to T. Likewise, we know that this event here is contained in the sigma algebra um, f uh, s minus 1 and that's why also in the sigma algebra f s and which is contained in the sigma algebra uh, f t. Hence we have here the intersection of events from the in sigma algebra f t um, and since this is a sigma algebra we get that this thing is contained in f t. Therefore, we have chosen, uh, proven that this event A intersected with the event that sigma is less than or equal to tau is contained in the sigma algebra F sigma minimum tau. Let us come now to the final statement, namely that in case the stopping time assumes a finite value, that the stopped process is a uh, um, random variable. More precisely, it is f tau measurable. Well, why is that the case? 
So if we take an event V from our uh, sigma algebra um, of our state space. And let us fix a uh, time point T and I. So then we have the following, namely, we know that, or we have to consider now the event that x tau uh, is in V, and we have to intersect that with the uh, event that tau takes a value which is less than or equal to T. Now we can rewrite that in the following way, namely as union n equal to zero up to t, that x n is in v, that's the values uh, tau, can assume, uh, intersected with the event that tau takes this value n. Now we see, well, since tau is a stopping time, we know that this event is contained in f n, and this is contained in f t due to the fact that n is less than or equal to t. Uh, since the process X is adapted, we know that this event here is contained in Fs, and since it is a, sig uh, a filtration, we know that Fs is contained in Ft. Again, we have shown that this event here is then contained in Ft, which simply shows that the pre-image of the set uh, B under this map X tau inverse is contained in the sigma algebra f tau, which we wanted to prove. Well, let us give a name to that sigma algebra f tau. And this sigma algebra f tau is simply called um, the sigma algebra of the tau past, where tau is a stopping time with respect to a given filtration f t. So uh, let us briefly um, give an example here at the end, maybe it's the following. I uh, consider as index set against uh, natural numbers including zero. So it's a countable infinite set. I consider a stochastic process um, with values in R, which is adapted to a given filtration. And um, let us consider now for k in R the following uh, stopping time, namely it's the infimum over all t in our index set such that the process xt takes values in this half open interval uh, k to infinity, meaning that this process takes values which are larger or equal to k. Moreover, we con uh, I would like to consider the following two events, namely by A, I would like to denote the event that the supremum of our process uh, takes a value which is larger than k minus 5, and B is the event that the supremum of our process over all uh, time points t and i takes a value which is larger than uh, k plus 5. So this first observation is the, is the following, and um, the event that tau is less than or equal to t is contained in the event uh, a for all uh, t and i. Why? Well, um, on this event we know that the process uh, x um, uh, has reached a value which is at least k, but this means that the maximum is larger or equal to k, and this means that it is in particular larger or equal, uh, larger than the value k minus five. So what do, uh, what does this imply? Well, if we now consider the intersection of this event a with the uh, event that tau takes a value less than or equal to t, since this event is contained in A. Uh, we get here simply the event that tau is less than or equal to t, and since tau is a stopping time, we know this is an ft for every t, meaning that this event is an event which is contained in the uh, sigma algebra of tau past. On the other hand, 
the event B uh, is in general not contained in the sigma algebra of B path. Why? Well, in order to decide uh, if the process reaches a level which is uh, k plus 5, when we only know that it has reached the level k, well, this depends on, on things which may happen into the future. And this we cannot decide given the information which is encoded in the sigma algebra f talk. 